we've got a quorum here, so maybe I'll dive in. I know Lauren can't make it. I haven't heard anything about Jennifer. Um, and that's Jeez. it. Jennifer Morton's on vacation this Great. month. Awesome. Um, maybe that's who I was thinking with them. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Never mind. Hi, Cameron. Cameron. Um, so we got a lot on our agenda. Um, and so I think I'll just drive us right in if that's okay. Um, of, you know, going over our minutes, we're doing the equity project matrix from the equity report. And I think it'd be helpful to do like, have a little bit of a conversation about next steps and talking about VR, VCRD, which will roll us into talking about grant opportunities. Um, and then looking at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns equity plan, and then the council equity plan update report. Um, and then it's after June for July 1st. So we can talk about more about the, um, uh, the uh, stipend outreach. Um, and then recognizing the workshop tonight that uh, Michael shared about and anything else that we want to make sure we hit and on this call and um, yeah, anything else to add to the agenda or move around. A lot of this is on you, Cameron. So sorry to, yeah, there we go. Great. <laughs> Thanks for being our staff. That's what I mean to say. Okay. Um, okay, so should we pull up the minutes from the June 15th meeting and um, see if there's any, anyone wants to make a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Helen, do you want a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, sorry, I'm still having my breakfast here as I'm talking here too. All right. Okay. Equity project matrix was I actually forgot to link it in the regular thing, but it's linked in the minutes. So if folks want to pull that back up or I can drop it in the chat or both. Um, and I think we kind of left off on talking about the policing components. And so um uh, yeah it feels like it's been a long time so i'm trying to if if anyone wants to dive in with oh that was cameron yeah so cameron checking in with the Montpelier police department for updating the police issues um recognizing that there's been a lot that's happened there and how much is that our responsibility for kind of keeping that up to date if there's no longer a police review committee um yeah Anyone have any thoughts on that? So I updated that in the report, not so much your in this document. So I apologize for that, but I figured that that is something that y'all can transfer over if you want to. Up to y'all. Yeah. Anything else with the matrix? I'm like, I can't remember if we were going to. Everything but that is updated as like in progress, complete, kind of where we're at. Well, hold on a minute here. Is there any note we want to put in the committee stipends row? It's operational. Okay. We can do it. I've gotten one person. I mean, I guess I could go into it when we're talking about the stipend mm -hmm. upreach, but I've gotten one application. That's really good. Um, 
Sounds like for a little while, but let's dive into it. Yeah. Um, I know, yeah, can't, uh, Jeremy posted on Front Porch Forum. I think we'll be continuing to do that, posting to all the committee chairs. But then, yeah, I mean, how how is it? The first one that's went out. How's that all the committee chairs. Also, am I getting then, an echo? Yeah, how, how, how I don't know if folks can mute. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't heard anything other than the one application I've received so far. So I'll probably try to do another push internally as well. I'll send another email out to the membership of committees um, and let them know that that is active and live and they can apply for that. Awesome. Cameron, then, is, there a, is there a single place on the website that lists all of the vacant or, or city committee opportunities? Um, we do have a like vacancy page, um, but I will be honest with you, it's not the most updated thing. So no, but I can ask staff to prioritize that and probably be uh, good. Yeah, I was thinking as I was crafting the thing I posted to Front Porch Forum, it would be nice to do a kind of a two, a double kind of plug, you know, one, here's all these committees you could possibly serve on. And there's this stipend available for you to help you do that. We will prioritize that. Thank you. Um, and I mean, should we just kind of continually be posting on Front Porch Forum social media? Do we have any kind of a schedule we need to make for that? Or is it just kind of make it up as we go, do you think? I know, I was initially thinking like once a week. And then I'm, now that we're there, I'm like, that, I feel like you need to blip. There's like four Front Porch Forums a day on Montpelier. <laughs> so mm -hmm. should we try to like do more concerted pushes or something um was the thought that i was having but i haven't done anything about because they also max you out on what you can post on too and so you know if we were to all post one week then we would have to wait a couple of weeks to do that again okay because you can only post like four times a month or something oh really um well why don't i since i did the first post why don't i maybe do max out my four and like over the next week or so. Right, yeah. And see what, see what we got. And then, yeah, um, Pellin or Michael, do either of you guys wanna like take a week to just like post four times in a week? Does that make sense? We wanted to just like push it out. Yeah, if you create a, like a schedule table or something. So people okay. can see, you know, what day mm -hmm. is their day. And it will be okay for me just to remind all of us, right? Mm -hmm. You want me to do that, so, Shana? I can do that. Oh, I mean, amazing. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know if people are, when people are out and things like that, but Jeremy, if you like do it over the next week and then Helen, if you like take over on the 20th, would that make sense? Like the 20th to the 27th? Uh, actually, I will be okay. in Miami until 26th. I'm leaving cool. this Saturday. Yeah, it's a family vacation, but I can do after 26th if it works. Would you? I don't, I'm oh, not okay. planning to bring my computer. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. If I can do, yeah, thanks. So, Helen, start on the 27th and then. I, I could do next week then. And then Michael, I know you just stepped away, but then to do the week after that, does that make sense? <laughs> and then it's been a month, so then we can start over again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll do a quick table of that. Should I put um, Lauren and Jennifer in the mix on that? They can do that, right? Great, yeah. They're the people that I messaged being like after you for just like posting over the last couple of weeks and I hadn't seen anything from them or heard okay. anything back from them. So okay. yeah, I could just be because they posted that they're on vacation and they can't go and that's come to this meeting. So 
Maybe okay. that's why. That, that'd be, yeah, let's add them in. All right. Um, Michael, you are muted. I'm so sorry. This is, you were this before. Is, this is just about the stipends that we're posting. Okay. So we can use the same message that whatever is going out, right? Yeah. And then, Michael, do you still have your press contacts too? Do we want to circle back to try to get some media? Who was that addressed to? To you, Michael. Yeah. Like of Tom or others at well, local. Tom has gone, you know, he said he's given he's given us a lot of space and he really can't, you know, his editor yeah. needs to get onto other things. So Okay. <laughs> I, I think we have to leave him alone for a while and until we have something there's something new going on. Great. What are my other media contacts? Um, well, I know Steve Pappas, uh, at, at, um, the editor of the Times Argus, so I could contact him. That sounds great. So what now, what we, I'm sorry, I'm, I stepped away. So what weekend am I doing? Uh, the, the posting on Front Porch Forum? For I think it's August 3rd to 11th. Is that right, Jeremy? Uh, I haven't written any of this down. No, I'm looking at Michael for you. Um, the first the week of July 31st through August 6th. Okay. So did you say that, Shannon? <laughs> no, yes. I was looking at different days, but that looks great. Okay. And it, you're allowed to do it for so. Um, four times a week? It's something like that, or four times a month. Um, I know they, they, if you post too often, they cut you off. Um, which is like great for discourse reasons and um, makes it hard to do these things where you're like, everyone should know about this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's from Porch Forum, Times Argus. Yeah, any other specific places? And then and Cameron will let all the committee chairs know. Yes. Any other places? Well, have we contacted? Well, I guess the, the bridge is uh, Tom McCone does that, but um, what about it's just like write a bed for the bridge or something? Yeah, I guess we could do that. We could just take the same text for the front porch form and, and send it out to the bridge. Okay. Yeah. What about Washington World? I mean, it's, that reaches beyond Montpelier, but. Um, is anyone... You used to work there, right? No, my kid used to deliver. Deliver. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, but it is, I think, I, I don't know how it works. Uh, I think you could do it as a, 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 a you know, send in Thing without pay, being a pay, something we pay for. Yeah. We can just let, let them know about that. Okay. Well, I'll put that on my list of things to do. And I think also if we like presented at the July 20th city council meeting, that could be um, powerful too, right? Like people get to hear about it there and then they cover it from there. We're going to talk about the council meeting. Now. Should we dive into talking about that? Is that cool? Yeah. Or I think first, you know, looking at the equity assessment recommendations progress updates that Cameron sent out on the 24th, that's attached here. Um, so we've got these. Um, I So is, is it okay to transition to that or anything else with stipend outreach? Okay. 
And I think we should also just like, let's just like take it on. And if you're like, oh, we should post here, like just do it. And then that'll, that'll be great. It's okay if there's duplicates getting the word out. Um, all right, Cameron, um, the, the um, status report. Yeah, so I had sent out um, the draft of the report to send to council. Um, uh, I don't know when you said the 24th, if you don't mind pulling that up. I had sent an update one that had all the police stuff added. So I hope that addressed the concerns that y'all had at your last meeting. Um, uh, the police department has looked at it. It isn't um, done in a vacuum. so. They helped uh, with that as well and um, took a lot of the um, <laughs> updates also from what the police review committee was doing. So again, this isn't um, happening in a vacuum and this isn't new information, I think, for council, but it's important for y'all to have that information as well. So um, you're still scheduled to present on the 20th. We have you right now in the beginning part of the agenda. So it's as soon as we can get to it. So. Um, I I don't have an, any sort of presentation done for y'all if you want to have slides or anything like that, or if you want to walk them through just sort of your work update, that's on y'all what you want to do there. But um, this report is ready to go to them as soon as y'all are comfortable with it. Great. Thank you so much. Um. So yeah, what do folks think? Do we want to have some sort of like? And how long do you think it could be? Oh, as long as you make it as short as yeah. long as you make it. It, it yeah. I don't think they would mind one way or the other. I think slides would be a helpful document to summarize and structure the presentation. Kind of going through the different pieces, um, yeah. Making a big plug for the site. Then, go ahead, Cameron. Oh, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm just typing. Sorry, I'll Sorry. Mute when I'm not. The green box going over you. Again. My house is loud. Sorry about that. <laughs> How, how did you, how are you thinking about handling the presentation, Shana? I mean, I haven't really been thinking. I was just like, well, just present. I don't, you know, <laughs> so if I, yeah, does it, do folks want to take different sections? I, I'm sorry, I haven't, I haven't thought this through at all, um, even though it's been on our agenda for a couple of, couple of times now. Um, yeah, does that, do, do, can folks make it, uh, you know, 6.30 to, let's say 6.30 to 7.30 for first thing on the agenda? on the 20th and um is there a section that you want to present on because i think it'd be great if we could get a bunch of voices up there uh, i can attend and i can help present i don't have a strong opinion about which items because i'm really just looking at this now um but it does seem like a lot for one person to have to carry so i'm happy to help this, this is going to be circulated in advance to the city council, right? So it's not as if it's, well, we, we can assume that they uh, will have at least scanned it or yeah. skimmed it, skimmed it. Mm -hmm. um, well, since I was on the police review committee, I'll take the police review part. Beautiful. That's great. And then, Pellin, are you going to be in Miami that week? Is that, yeah, OK. So yeah, I, can, more, yeah, oh. I can have with the preparation. If cool. you tell me what uh, to do, but unfortunately, I cannot attend the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm kind of thinking about this. We're going to do like a big picture overview, and then we let them ask questions, right? Like, does that like I'm even thinking about it? Like, I could, um, You know, like I could, like I could, if there's three of us, I could give like the orientation, like the over, you know, how we got here, and and then Jeremy, if you wanted to go over the creative discourse recommendations, although that's also a lot, <laughs> and then Michael go over the police review committee recommendations, which is a lot, 
um, kind of like big picture and then be, you know, able to ask, answer questions and then kind of make the pitch for the stipends. Is that? I, I think that makes sense. I think, um, I think focusing on kind of like really the high level stuff, like not too much in the details to begin, like you say, an overview. I don't think that's too much to bear for us. Yeah. Um, and then we can get into details when they have specific questions. So what prep should we assign to Pellin? So <laughs> just, um, do you wanna make the first cut of the PowerPoint to share? Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Let me just share that by email. <clears throat> Cool. Just uh, as I'm looking through the police thing, um, I can never remember acronyms. What is LEO? In, in... Law, enforcement. law enforcement. Oh, law enforcement officers. Oh, I'll, I can. Um, I I do that a lot, and I'm sorry. I will go through the present. I will go through the report, and I will take out the whatever they're called and uh, acronyms, acronyms, and I will I will write them out. I will do that today. Okay. I will send it back out. <laughs> no, you don't have to. The most of them are actually, most of them are. Most of the acronyms um, have something that shows what they are, but that one doesn't. And, okay. And... Okay, well, let's fix that. <laughs> Well, I assume one of the questions that they're going to ask is like, so what's next? You know, like, what is our next priority? And so I'm wondering if we can dive into that for like 15 minutes. Because I did have a conversation with Vermont League of, not Vermont League of Cities and Towns, Vermont Council on Rural Development folks, Jessica and Jenna. Um, and just kind of to learn more about what their process is and um, how they think about their work and how it could overlap or intersect with our potential next steps. Um, okay to dive, dive in there. Sorry, I feel like I always am just like skipping around on our agendas. And uh, I, have, I have one logistical yeah. question about council next week. Are folks planning to be there in person or are we doing this all? Are we going to decide to be remote? What, what's, what's the feeling about that? It is next week, isn't it? Ah, I was like, it's not next week. <laughs> Well, I guess the question could go to Cameron. What, do, do, the, do the council members really prefer to have us there live, or are they happier to let us do this remotely? It definitely does not matter. It is all your comfort level. Um, it is easier if, if, well, you know, honestly, yeah, everyone's the same. It, it honestly doesn't really matter. It's worked out well with people in person and online both. So it really does have to do with your schedules and your comfort level. We can make it work no matter what. I am facilitating another call at eight. And so I, I, either we would act like if we can actually be done at 730 or I feel like sometimes things get late and then I can just go boop boop from one call to the next um is my preference but all totally flexible yeah I don't have a strong opinion either way I think it does sound smoother if we're all in the same channel um so I'm totally comfortable with doing it remote okay me too yeah great thanks team Awesome. And we can just present or have Cameron present or in, in person, things like that. Cool. Thanks for asking. Um, so I, yeah, I was, um, I didn't know really how Vermont Council of Rural Development thought about their work. And it really seems like there's a lot of overlap with what we were doing with creative discourse. And so like, wish we had had this presentation, you know, three years ago. Um, so yeah, so Vermont Council on Rural Development for municipalities, they do this like community visit process where 
they um, go at the invitation of like the select board, the city council, things like that. And they have a three-step process where they bring the community together to bring kind of all the ideas out onto the table. They um, kind of do a pitch and a vote to narrow it down to a handful of priorities, so like four or five priorities. And then they create task force and committees to get the resources needed to get started or to continue on doing this work. So they were very clear that they did not have capacity to take on doing this, like this big, you know, deep dive in with um, this, the, the first cities or towns this year or next year. But they did say that they also, and that they were like, and it doesn't make sense too, because it sounds like you guys have done a lot of this work already of like, you've like created, you know, like their work has led to CJAC equivalent committees in other city, other towns in Vermont, but that, um, that they, there's like a lot of overlap kind of with what we have done already. So they also do these like one-off, so they have a couple of different options. So they also do these one-off facilitations, which are where they bring in kind of different like resources and they, they, and they have like this community leadership guide. Um, and then they can also be like consultants for doing this work. So they can like more just like work with us who are organizing the you know, uh, convenings or convergences kind of as the people on the ground and they can just kind of like provide more of the consulting stuff like what we were doing with creative discourses. Um, they have never worked in Montpelier. They did just do the kind of a full community visit process in Barrie last year. Um, oh, they have worked in Montpelier. They did a one-off in Montpelier. So this kind of like, you know, the one-off facilitation process previously. Um, and yeah, I mean, and so the way the, um, they, uh, let me look over my notes here too. Um, yeah, so they wanted, really wanted to caution for the full process because they said, you know, like we have our marching orders, like we, ha we know what issues that we wanna work on. So thinking that like, there's more of the options that would make sense for them to support us on is like this one one time facilitation, like a really scaled back version, just because they don't really have the capacity right now, but they could kind of like swoop in and kind of do a one off on one of these priorities or they where they could like then like facilitate and like do the work or they could be more of like a consulting role and helping us to like be able to pull something like this off. They do, they are fee for service. So they do um, for the one-offs for the deep dives, they do um, get like their own grants to be able to do that work. And so it's like an hourly rate set by staff. Um, and that includes like setting the agenda, facilitating the meeting, like doing, doing all of that stuff. Um, and then they were also just like, they're like, want to make sure it's like invited in with the city and town leadership. And it's not like a small group of, of residents. And I was like, no, no, no. I really feel like we're deeply embedded in city government. Like this is not a surprise to anyone. Um, and so then they also referenced Winooski's committee, commission on equity and, um, and they have been kind of in communication with like Susanna Davis's office and partnership and, um, also reference looking at Milton as another place where they could be um, parallels to like what we're trying to do with our work. Um, but yeah, I was just like, you know, I said, we're interested in learning some like best practices and holding large open meetings um, to hear from the public about how to take on these next steps. And they were definitely interested in, in talking to us more about these different options. And I like back in this meeting was going to be two weeks ago, I was like, let's just like touch base as a team to talk about what the next steps would be. And then if like, we're like, okay, we want to invite them in to do a one-off, then they could come to the next call to like talk more about what that would mean or for doing consulting or something like that. Um, or if we are like, this may, this is maybe not the right next step for us because we are focusing on something else. So let me pause there. How does that all sound? I just, I didn't know that they did this work. And I was like, bummer, why did we go through this whole thorough process of RFDs? <clears throat> well, they could have helped us out by responding to the RFP, but- um, Sure, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, well, anyway, that's that's water over the dam, right? <laughs> no, I didn't think about that. Yeah, but that they could just do an RFP. Um, 
Well, do we, uh, you know, as I look through all of these, do we as a committee have a priority among these various areas of recommendation? Um, and, and, and I ask that because, you know, they're all over the place and there are now, organ there are new committees that the city has created, like the Homeless Committee, Homeless the Committee right. of Homelessness, which is taking on a big, a big chunk of the most important issue, I guess. Um, and that, that raises in, in my mind the question, well, what do we do next? What's our, what's our role uh, in, in any of what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, I think there's like. They can stop her. I don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that there's kind of like the reviewing the existing policies through an equity lens. I know the city council was doing that pre pandemic. And so I don't know kind of where that stands. And then I think also the piece on language access. Where is that? Like, I don't think th those aren't like being owned or like by any external thing other than city staff. And I don't know if that is a particularly helpful angle or if something else. Yeah. But thanks for raising the question, Michael. I will say we, that to me, for, for me as a staff perspective, that one's a huge one. Um, we just hired a communications person. She's part-time. I know we're very excited. Um, so you should be seeing probably some aggressively upgraded <laughs> communication out of our office. But I think that's something that I would really like her to help with. Um, that is something we, it's just been on my plate, right? And I hate to sound like um, a complainer, but it's, a, it's one of many things on my plate, right? So it's hard to, it's hard. And so, to me, that would be, that's a huge one internally. Like, I think that would be a, a big deal. We have a lot of folks in our community that we don't think about who are English a second language and how do we um, get our materials uh, and get our staff in a place that they can support that and work with folks. And um, I don't think we're in a really great place. We have a translation line. So that is set up and ready for folks if they need it, but that doesn't make our offices, our, uh, our materials more welcoming, right? How do people even know we have that? So um, to me, that one's really important, um, uh, but I, I do think it would require some assistance. So hopefully when um, our new communications person is ready, we can get her to help us with that. But um, to me, that one's a big deal. So thank you. On a, on a related point, uh, and I'm trying to find where that is, I, I saw an advertisement for a workshop on <clears throat> um, social justice art posters. Yeah. Did I send that along? I think I, think yeah. I sent it along. Yeah, I'm planning on uh, going. It looks cool. Thanks yes. for sharing. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that could be very, that could have some really interesting possibilities in terms of uh, trying to find all the artists, we have so many artists around in our community that maybe we can, there's some opportunity for an initiative for the, the, either the city um, does a, uh, a request, for, you know, invites people to do it and, and or commissions artists to do some work at, at some rate. I mean, I think you have to build in a budget for that if you're going to really do a serious campaign um, uh, I'm, I think I'm planning to go to that and I'll find out more about it uh, when if I can find the date for it. But as I said, with, with my computer gone most yeah. of the, in the last couple of weeks, I'm not sure where anything is anymore. But uh, I will. I'll, I'll, is anyone else planning to go to that? I'll see you there. It's in October. Meet between our houses. Do you remember what date it is? Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there it is, 6.30. Um, 
Okay, well, I'll um, I'll take notes and bring that back back to us to you know, in our next meeting. And so I think I have like two questions here. I guess is you know, one, do we we could also alternatively say, all right, VCRD, we here's what we have done can like or here here's where our recommendations are what do you recommend that we focus on next kind of in that more consultant role mm -hmm. or can we like kind of hit refresh and like say we know you can't do it this year but like let's look at you know next year 18 months from now start making plans for doing this kind of analysis again Well, I like that because we need to, we, I think we should give ourselves some time. We had a big menu of things to do here. Yeah. Um, if we give ourselves another year, we can go back to the rural, uh, rural development, uh, rural fund and say, here's what we were, here was the agenda that was given to us as a result of our work two years ago. Uh, and here's what we've done. What do you think, what do you think we, where, where should we go? Yeah. I like that idea. I, I think this is, a lot is happening very quickly and that's very in, encouraging, but I think we also need to give, give it time. It was a very big, big set of recommendations. And Shana, they will measure what we have done, right? Are they what do you mean? To do that. Like uh, you said, we have done so many things, right? based on their recommendation. But how do we know that it's those things reach out to people? So can they measure this, right? Pe do people know, at least the people who uh, they talked before, right? <coughs> um, you know, if we were able to inform people or change something for them, then it will make sense, right? All the things we made, if we don't know the results, then it will be just things on paper. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's maybe where my question is coming from is like, right, do we have them help us and saying, here's where our recommendations are at, and then like help us come up with a process to know when things are completed when we can move them on the spreadsheet from in progress to completed and like when to kind of wrap things up there. I think I was thinking of it or have them come back in 18 months and, and not do an analysis of our problem, but we could also do an and. But it sounds like maybe it would be helpful to have them come coming up to to talk about what like have them read over our status report and to give have them make a proposal for what our their next steps could be. Does that sound right? Mm, we'll kind of put it on them. <laughs> that's the easy way out for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Cause I kind of just like talked to them about what we had done, but I, I, but not the like, mm -hmm. here's what the actual next steps were just more of like, here's this thing that we did. Um, okay, great. That was easy. Love hunting, answering these questions to other people. All right. Um, we're doing great on time. Here we go. Um, do we want to talk about grant opportunities? I think Cameron, you had shared this one from Vermont Community Foundation. Yeah, I just didn't, I, you know, those are the things that if you want to work with the Vermont Council on rural development or whatever, that would be how we would get funding for it. So we're still, I mean, it's still not great um, budget wise right now for the city. Uh, we're doing better, but we're not doing great. 
ARPA money is a one-time thing, so it's not like a continuous infusion of ARPA money. So uh, my uh, continued recommendation for y'all would be to find if you want to continue to do this work, in addition to the to the money we had for the um, uh, creative discourse contract. If you want to do more, and we want to work with other groups, we need to try to find grant funding. And so, um, you know, some of these are smaller and are easily doable by staff. Some of them might take longer. So, you know, it's up to y'all if you have the time right now. We can certainly talk about this after your presentation to council, after we get sort of an in, in, insight from them on maybe where they want to go next. And that might be a question, you know, I've been sitting here thinking while you're trying yeah. to make say like other groups to tell us what they want to do next, put put that on council and ask them what they want to prioritize next, you know? Yeah. Is there a new fiscal year? They might have, like, we want you to spend time doing X. It might even be if you ask them what they want you to focus on next, it might be something completely not even on our equity assessment, right? So that would be my suggestion. And also, you know, I just wanted to start adding this back to y'all's agendas, if you're okay with that, because I think you're you're sort of all looking for what what's next and like how you can and i really heard what pellin just said about like how do we prove things right like how do we say the work that y'all have done which i would argue has gone beyond just paper updates but how do you prove that and i think that kind of work can be really helpful um from outside groups uh so that would i just sort of wanted to keep that on on people's radars um, so I did send a grant opportunity. It will not be the last one, um, but I can certainly um, ask them if they would be willing to uh, sort of fund a continuation of a project instead of like a new project and see what they say. And if they say yes, then I can certainly just throw an application together um, for that. But just, just, so all that rambling was just to say, I really want to keep that on the ulcer radar. Uh, when I saw that come through, I, I thought to myself, oh, we're just a little bit late to get this, get the uh, stipend project off the ground with, with grant money. But uh, it might be that if you can, if they would fund an ongoing thing, we can go back with some results about how many people uh, applied for the stipend at the end of the year and maybe get some, some relief, leave the, state, the city budget. <clears throat> that, that I particularly love by getting a grant for it to continue it. Great. I'll put that on my list to do ASAP. It's just to ask them if they would fund something continuing. Well, yeah, but I also feel like we could frame things as like, what are what are we looking for funding are, for as the next thing? Could be a, its own project, right? Like I, yeah, that's true. I don't know because we don't have a pitch of what that would be quite yet. I think we can I mean, we could ask, but I don't think we need to action on that yet. Is that that's okay? Yeah, that's fair. And then dare I say it, I think we're going to get through our agenda early because I think the last thing to look at is the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Equity Plan Review, um, which I will say I have not spent a lot of time on, but that Cameron shared, and by not spent a lot of time on, meaning I have opened the document, but I have not read it through. So <laughs> full disclosure. Um, but Cameron, yeah, do, do you know any of the context or background of this? Uh, um, VLCT sort of created their own equity committee, very similar to what y'all are doing to sort of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at general processes and, and things that could be um, addressed. And to, I just wanted to include this on your agenda because I, I didn't know if you wanted to steal BARA or whatever, any of their verbiage, or if you've liked, if anything struck a, a nerve that we wanted to address or start working on. Um, mostly, I think it was a, a policy driven 
investigation, but I did think it was interesting. So, I mean, it, if y'all haven't looked it over, that's also fine. Um, just thought it was an interesting document and wanted to bring it sort of to the fore and to the public as well. I'm wondering, Cameron, how, how you found this useful, because as I read some of the, the goals, in some ways they feel more within the purview of the city to implement. Like I'm looking at, and these are things that you've already started to do, right? Like I'm looking at develop workforce awareness, knowledge, and skills necessary to be active partners in creating a diverse, equitable, inclusive organization um so some of these i'm not sure how we would take some of these as an advisory committee um so i'm curious how you're you're seeing the specifics of this as related to the city efforts well to be perfectly honest i think some of these things are are hard mm -hmm. um you know i was talking to one of my staff members who is um, a black woman and she was talking about like how hard it is in Vermont to be um, needing to represent an all, right? Like all BIPOC women um, or all BIPOC people because she's like one of the few that we have in our, you know, in our workforce. And so I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be really like esoteric about my answer there. Cause I, I think a lot of these things are um, actionable but they don't say how to make actions, right? Like they're not, they're like, make your workforce more diverse. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, great, thank yeah. you. That's very <laughs> helpful. Um, you know, I am trying. And so, and you know, but I was talking to the staff member and I'm bringing that up because to me, some of those recommendations are, aren't helpful because what's really actually important is retention, not recruitment. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and that's honestly less about us. I mean, obviously I can control what I can control internally, but it's also external as well. And so I think a lot of these, these recommendations are really great. Um, if someone is just trying to start out, but I think because we have y'all as a committee, we've already sort of taken a lot of these, I feel are like kind of baseline. Like, I think these would be a great recommendation for a community that hasn't started to dig into this work. Mm -hmm. And I think because we have been digging into this work for a couple of years now, uh, some of these are like, yes, and what, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and. And I think we're, Montpelier is at that and stage, like, and how do we make that happen? And how do we keep that, how do we make that stick? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I one of the things that I really wanted to come out of this conversation with y'all is, did we miss anything, right? Like, these are so big and broad to me. Like, did we miss any of these big, broad things? And how, if so, we need to say, yes, we missed X, and how do we bring that into our plans as well? So, um, you know, I, I really haven't done that work on my, I, I can admit that I haven't done that work either to look and see, like, what do I consider something as missing? Um, but I think there's a really good time too, because we're starting to look at our strategic planning process for the next few years. And um, if there is a big gap in our equity plan, I, I would like to know, you know, I, I really need to do that work and would love assistance doing that work so that that can be included in the next strategic plan so that we can say like right now, my biggest thing is retention. Like how do we make what kind of training do we give staff that isn't about re like recruitment, but about how do you create equitable places for people to actually work in, right? Like we are um, piloting that whiteness at work program. And I think that's gonna be really important for our staff to take as a, as a larger group. So my goal for the next strategic plan is to build out those sort of trainings and recruit like tools to keep us, like to, to make sure we're retaining a diverse workforce because our 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 organization is one built on inclusion instead of 
it being a recruiting afterthought. You know what I mean? I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm being very esoteric this morning, but like I really want to to make sure that we're not missing any of these bigger picture things. No, that's super helpful. I don't. I don't think you're being esoteric at all. I think. Yeah. I think that's the wrong word for what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But yeah, thank you. You're being very specific. I think I think you're yeah. focused on retention. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Like it's like the sustainability of all these great like you know, declarations we're making about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like the other day, this is like a big thing and I, I haven't been able to like share it. We we sort of missed the boat on sharing it publicly, but we had our very first all women uh, police shift the other day that everyone on shift was a woman. And that's a huge deal. I don't think we've ever had that before. And that's a huge deal for us. And, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that that those positions are stay safe and welcoming and that that happens again, you know, very cool yeah like all the stuff that you were just talking about i feel like it's all under this you know eight two of like offering an equity awareness curriculum offering you know like equity you know toolkits and having re like that that eight section but that it's also like kind of throughout and right and that's i'm like is that i don't think that's the role of c jack but it could be um yeah you know, that's the thing, though, is like so many people have different ideas of what that is, like what that toolkit is. Like yeah. I could just hand out people like a pamphlet that says accept others, but that means nothing. Yeah. You know, like it, right. I just <laughs> it, but that means nothing. Yeah. Um, so it, it's harder than that. It has to come from the both the bottom and the top. And people really need to buy into that you know, that it's like, how does this benefit them? And that's like the big, that's the big question. I think, you know, saying that Shana, like you saying like, yeah, I, I do see it in there, but I also don't see any specificity that says what that is. And so like, y'all have been really helpful to help determine like what that thing is and what that training is and what it would, what it should look like. Right. Cause I, you know, that toolkit for, um, the budget has been super helpful and that because that was a specific thing instead of just saying have a like look at your budget through an equity lens you mm -hmm. guys gave us like a, a tool to use to do that and that's mm -hmm. really helpful and I don't think sometimes that gets it these kind of things don't really get down into that sort of nitty-gritty mm -hmm. hmm. yeah and I don't know I'm just like doing this at my current workplace now too is like going through like how is like white supremacy culture showing up at our work is like so much different like to to look at retention it's like looking at like what are our current practices how are they reinforcing the status quo how are they making this like an inhospitable work environment for other folks but even if like we don't have like the like language or lens to be able to talk about it sorry this is like having me go down a rabbit hole but um yeah that's like a very different question a toolkit for looking at it. Um, oh, okay there's one other thing that's catching my eye in um, their equity plan which is around it's the meaningful partnerships pillar develop positive and respectful mm -hmm. internal and external partnerships that contribute to inclusive decision making um and I guess what's coming up for me, especially in a place like Vermont and a small community like Montpelier, who are the kind of other other partners in this work that we could be calling into it more than we are. You know, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of like you know the Central Vermont chapter of Surge showing up for racial justice. I'm thinking of um, our kind of a pride organization um how do we this is a question like how do we build more connections um 
between those groups and Montpelier city government just to like coordinate, but also rely on each other. Um, that's, a, that's a big question, but I'm, I'm curious about how we can strengthen that. I, Shana, can we add that conversation to a future agenda? Because I, I also would really love yeah. to, to talk about that. I think we should invite someone from uh, the school board. I know that high school does so many things uh, on DEI, and they also have this restorative practice this club, and they even um, uh, ask uh, administration to um, offer um, workshop uh, to uh, teachers how to deal with uh, international students and students who have two uh, different culture in their house, you know. Um, so I will be curious to hear uh, from school board uh, what kind of things they are doing, because I think one of the strengths of Montpelier, it's uh, education system, it's schools. So I think we can learn and we can work with them more. Should we, so I think something like if next meeting we kind of debrief the city council presentation and we have Vermont League of Cities in town, not Vermont League of Cities in town, Vermont Council of Village Development pitch us on what we could be doing. And then maybe the next meeting, I mean, depending on how this all works out, more talk about these partnerships, including schools. Does that okay? Excuse my yawn. Yes, and I wanna say thank you to Pellin for that idea. I think that's great. Yeah. All right, I wanna make sure we can close this out here on time. But so I think for next meeting, I'm gonna reach out to VCRD about having some sort of pitch and then we'll also ask the city council in the interim um, if what, what where we should be focusing our efforts. Um, Jeremy's gonna send out the front porch forum on um, updates or you know, like, timeline. Um, Cameron's going to post on the vacancy page and um, Michael will reach out to Times Argus and the world. Um, and um, email them our status report. Oh, that's for um, BCRD too. And then for the city council, um, Pellin's gonna make the PowerPoint. I'll provide the context. Jeremy will kind of go over what we've done uh uh um michael go over the police review committee and then talk about what we can do next to make the the stipends pitch is kind of the pieces that i'll do um is that all of the next steps am i missing anything sounds right cool thank you all um well i'll see you tomorrow michael and then see the rest of you on the 20th mm -hmm. uh to see you sunday on the computer mm -hmm. bye <laughs> cool. thank you bye.